Today, our NBC News First Read team notes, quote, if you're a politician, your biography matters. They are referring to the Dallas Morning News headline this weekend about the Democratic candidate for governor of the state, State Senator Wendy Davis. Now, the article looks at how Davis has blurred some key facts in her campaign, starting with this. She was raised by a single mother with a sixth grade education. She married young and by 19 was divorced and raising me as a single mother. You know how they say everything's bigger in Texas? Well, that certainly wasn't the case for the trailer we lived in. So among the things the Dallas paper revealed, Wendy Davis was 21, not 19, when she first got divorced. And her mother attended school through ninth grade, not sixth grade. Though she lived in a mobile home, it was for a few months while separated from her first husband. In response, Wendy Davis issued a statement saying, my language should be tighter. I'm learning about using broader, looser language. I need to be more focused on the details. Joining me live, NBC News senior political editor Mark Murray. So, Mark, what, what are we to make of this? Give us the temperature of something like this and the impact. And, and uh, Wendy Davis saying that, quote, she needs to, uh, she should be tighter with her language. Well, all politicians should be tied with their language. All journalists, when you're telling a story, you should always have your facts straight. And this is potentially problematic for Wendy Davis in that it goes to credibility issues. I mean, one of the things that makes her so appealing is her narrative, her biography, uh, which she was actually standing for when she was filibustering that became an instant uh, political uh, persona when she was doing that. But as we've often seen sometimes that uh, the uh, actual uh, narrative of things isn't as uh, cut and clean as you would sometimes think. And so if I think the biggest problem for her is that all of a sudden, if her political opponents see uh, more uh, things of exaggeration, other credibility issues, that could really hurt her. If this is a one-time thing, I think she's able to uh, move on and learn this lesson. Does it speak to the threat um, that she poses um, in that, of course, obviously a victory would be incredible in my and your home state of Texas and also the mm -hmm. larger conversation we've discussed uh, regarding the politics of Texas and the shift that many believe might be inevitable regarding from red to at least a purple state um, before we all leave this planet, Mark. Well, if she was going to be able to win and beat Greg Abbott in Texas gubernatorial contest this year, she's going to have to run a perfect race, uh, catch a lot of breaks. Right. We already know she's raising a tremendous amount of money. And this is one of the first episodes in which we're actually seeing somebody who is now on the very big stage and having to deal with something. And all politicians deal with problematic issues, whether you're a Democrat or Republican. It's often how you yeah. respond yeah. to that and learn from that. And that's what we'll end up seeing from this. Look at David Vitter. I mean, mm -hmm. now announcing that he plans to run for governor of Louisiana after, um, you know, a hellacious scandal regard, re revolving around um, hookers, prostitutes, I don't know what the proper <laughs> name to call it, and uh, that scandal. Well, home state politics trumps all, Tamara. I mean, yeah. if David Vitter were running for governor of Ohio or Virginia, he'd be in much bigger problems, and he'd actually have a very difficult time of winning a Senate re-election, as we saw. And that's the problem with Wendy Davis here in Texas. As a Democrat, there's very little margin for error. David Vitter has a whole lot more margin for error running mm -hmm. as a Republican in a state like Louisiana. So I think that's the difference there. Thank you very much, Mark. Greatly appreciate you joining us today. Thanks, Tamara.